Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Green Mountain Care Board meeting. This is a follow-up and an adjournment from last week's meeting for the purpose of hearing um, from Northwest Medical Center on a request for a mid-year rate adjustment. Um, before we get started, a um, couple announcements. First of all, there will not be a board meeting on Wednesday. Um, we will have the discussion on hospital budget guidance the following Wednesday, May 13th. Um, since uh, adjourning last week's meeting, we did receive follow-up um, information that was received from Northwest, and we received two public comments, one from Ham Davis and one from Julia Shaw at the Office of Healthcare Advocate. Um, Patrick, uh, does the staff have something to uh, add to tee this off? Yes, I will make a brief announcement that following last week's uh, presentation by us, it was brought to our attention that we didn't factor in um, the compounding nature of this rate request. So we originally had the combined increase at, I think, 20.8%. Um, and you can see here on slide number two, uh, the appropriate math, which brings the increase to 21.7%, and we verified this with uh, the folks at Northwestern Medical Center. So that's the um, change to this presentation. And uh, for the court reporter, this is Patrick Rooney of the Green Mountain Care Board. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, I'm going to uh, take an attendance so that we have an accurate record of who was at this meeting. And the numbers that I do not see names for, I'm just gonna call off the last four, and if you could tell us who you are. So the first number is 5001. Julia Shaw with the HCA. Thank you, Julia. 6959. This is Andrew Gary from Manuscutney Hospital. Thank you. Uh, 0476. Lisa Deron from Blue Cross of Vermont. Thank you, Lisa. Um, 2505. Good morning, Jennifer Collis, UVM Medical Center. Thank you. 7438. Ham Davis. Hi, Ham. 5835. It's Abigail Connolly. Okay. 8975. John Buck, Mary Garbini, Green, um, Northwestern Medical Center. Thank you. 9314. This is the court reporter. Thank you. And 9806. Mike Fisher, healthcare advocate. Good morning, Mike. Abigail, do you have everyone else's name listed? Yes, but if you could call anyone who didn't, you know, you didn't say their name out loud, besides Becky Lewandowski, um, I think we got everyone. Okay, is there anyone? Go ahead. This is Robin Alves. I'd also like to say that I have Devin Batchelder and Stephanie Grove with me. Thank you, Robin. Is there anyone else? Hearing none, um, Robin will give you the opportunity to add anything that you would like to add. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Robin Alvin, CFO with Northwestern Medical Center. A couple of points that I would like to make and just to remind for the board, um, one, as you can see from the slide that Patrick has, um, obviously uh, the percentage rate is very high, but if you look at the dollar impact to the system, what we're asking for is still $4 million, more than $4 million less than what our approved uh, <clears throat> revenue would have been. I think that's important to note. Also, while we feel that we have done our appropriate due diligence with our payers, um, this rate increase, even at the full amount, 
um, would not increase the net dollars uh, that they would have paid out for claims um, if we were on track with our uh, revenue budget that was approved back in August. Thank you, Robin. Patrick, do you have any questions for Robin and her team? I do not, no. Okay. With that, we'll open it up to the board to begin discussing um, this case. Um, would anybody have any questions or comments? Um, sure, this is Maureen. Um, I can start. Um, so the request you know, for a 14.9% commercial rate increase as presented was driven by two factors. A $7 million loss due to slowed revenue into the end to the EMR implementation, which is worth about 11.5%, and a $2 million increase due to the cost of travelers, which was $3.3 million. The full year increase recoups $9 million, or 100% of the lost income, primarily result, as a result of the above factors. NMC will lose um, approximately $10 million in net income this year after staffing losses, um, after suffering losses in the past several years. Looking at the drivers of this request, a rate increase to me is not the solution. If the $7 million loss is due to the EMR implementation, it should come back. If it is primarily gone, then changes need to be made to restructure to offset a revenue decline. Clearly, the best solution is to bring the productivity back to the pre-EMR state. The balance of the request was to offset the increase in travelers from a historical run rate of 400,000 in 2018, 690,000 in 2019, and then 2.3 million in 2020. This expense should have an offset in salaries at approximately 50%. So approximately $1 million. Typically, we said travelers run at about 20 of what would be staffed costs. There will always be variances in the budget, and it just seems a mid-year rate increase at this point to recover a $1 million, which is half of the nursing staff uh, travelers increase, does not seem warranted and should wait until the 2021 budget cycle. The hospital has stated they have been doing cost cutting and cost optimization to offset shortfalls, and they don't feel they have more to offset. But in order to be financially stable and sustainable, the hospital needs to put together a plan that supports lower revenues if they're not going to get the revenues back from the EMR um, and not have such a reliance on making up the shortfall with commercial rate increases. So with that, I will kick that off to everybody. Uh. I'm happy to jump in here if somebody else wants to speak. Go ahead, Jess. Okay. Um, so I actually you know, have a lot of uh, agreement with what Maureen just said. I'm sympathetic. Um, all of our hospitals are financially vulnerable right now, and we, when we emerge from this, we're going to have a ton of work to do to ensure that our system is strong. We're going to need probably sustainability plans from everybody, is what I think. But Northwest is coming to us now with a one-off mid-year emergency adjustment, and if you actually dig into it, it's really a 19.5% increase applied to hospital services with 0% applied to the ambulatory care. So when you annualize that, when you consider we had a 5.9 already last October, and you add that to the 19.5, we're talking about an annualized increase of over 25% for hospital services at Northwest. And in my time at the board, I cannot remember ever allowing such a substantial rate increase, especially not mid-year, and frankly, with so little documentation. Um, we're in unprecedented times, but we have to remember this is a pre-COVID request, and I'm still unclear as to what's happening at Northwest. If it's lost volume due to the EHR transition, that should come back. If this is uh, the new normal for Northwest, then where did all that volume go and why? Uh, in their written submission, they talked about losing physician FTEs, but then at the hearing, they said that didn't sound right. But we never got a correction in sub sub subsequent correspondence. So I don't really know what's happening with staffing, what's driving this lower volume, um, whether it's the new normal or not. If it's temporary, it should return without a need for a permanent rate increase. If this is the new normal, then I feel like we need far more information about how they're going to adjust to this new lower capacity, how they're going to meet community needs before we could possibly, in my mind, approve a rate increase of this magnitude. So I can't support it at this time. 
I would really need to see that they've left no stone unturned before approving that. And particularly at a time when businesses are facing closures, job losses, furloughs, uncertain financial futures, this rate request seems a little out of touch with the reality that are facing Vermonters right now. So my suggestion is instead of a 25% roughly annualized rate increase on acute hospital side charges, I'd love to see them look a little bit closer at expenses. If these are really new lower volumes, then there should be a substantial adjustment downward in expenses. Service lines need to be reviewed even more vigorously. I want to understand the ICU. A large proportion of the $2 million traveler's cost came from the ICU. It seems like, I don't know, I don't have an actual real sense of what percentage, but it seemed as though that was one of the drivers of that traveler's cost. Is a six bed ICU necessary with an academic medical center six, you know, 30 miles down the road? What is the average daily census there? How much would Northwest save if its critical care unit closed? Could Northwest patients be absorbed? I don't have the answers to this, but I feel as though since that was one of the major cost drivers, we would need to know those answers before we could support a rate increase of this magnitude. I really want to see a sustainability plan that reflects local community needs, a full analysis of their contribution margins by service line, and a recognition of what's available down the road. I'd like to know where other revenue sources are. They hadn't reached out to DIVA, have local donors we solicited, what's happening with federal money. There's a big new ask of the government uh, now for hospitals to have a, a, another round of funding. So before we do a permanent and massive commercial rate increase, I'd want to know what was happening with, with other potential revenue offsets. And I, I go back to the point I made last week. I think that, you know, uh, I'd rather see Northwest use the 15 days cash on hand necessary to cover the current shortfall. Um, they would still be above the Vermont median in terms of days cash on hand. And it seems to be a better solution than an unprecedented rate request that's forever baked into commercial charges and ultimately into consumer insurance premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. Now, I want to say this is, this is a hard position to take because I sympathize, I really do, with where Northwest is. I know the pain is real and the timing of these shocks could not have been worse given COVID. And I, what I would like to see is that we revisit all of this again in July when the budgets are uh, submitted, July, August, whenever those might be, when we're better able to assess how all hospitals are faring, faring, not failing, faring, how much financial support has been provided from the federal government, how much, what happens to utilization at, at Northwest post EHR implementation and post COVID. So I'd rather look at the system holistically and um, so I can't support this right now with the data that I've been given. Thank you, Jess. Robin or Tom? Uh, this is Tom. Um, <clears throat> this is a little bit difficult because there are some, some areas that, quite frankly, don't have much to do with this request that I am sympathetic, um, uh, that make me somewhat sympathetic. And that is the five-year charge trend of seven-tenths of one percent, which is is very low, well below any system-wide average. And, you know, I wasn't around for a lot of that, but it, I would think it, it will have been a wind in the face, you know, of the hospital for these past five years. Also, the payer mix, um, again, something not directly related to this request, but, you know, Northwestern does not have a, uh, a, a, a you know, a great payer mix at 49.2% commercial versus 17 uh, percent, 17.6 percent Medicaid. Well, as compared to the system at 54.1 percent uh, <clears throat> uh, commercial and 11.4 percent Medicaid. But that said, um, you know, I'm looking at the uh, annualized uh, amount of this increase if it were uh, granted, and it's uh, you know on a 2020 annualized basis, and it comes exactly to the sum of uh, these two moving parts with one being the EMR and the other temporary staff at $9 million, a little over $9 million. And so if, if these are granted and rolled into the base as we head into the 2021 period, you know, that's a, that's a pretty substantial um, uh, rollout. Um, so my, you know, uh, while I'm sympathetic, um, there are so many moving parts here that aren't being addressed um, in terms of uh, the FPP snafu, which is $5.8 million, um, the uh, in investment and gains and losses, the integration with the emergency department request, 
Um, I'm looking at Medicaid uh, in this proposal where uh, Medicaid, where, where Medicaid uh, would be dropping from their budgeted amount of uh, 20 million 500 thousand down to uh, uh, 17 thousand 600. Um, so all of this burden is being shifted onto the commercial payers, uh, which just does not seem, um, uh, you know, a, a kind of a fair allocation. So, um, like the other two board members, I, I, you know, I, I'm looking for a healthy discussion of all of these, um, including how this all integrates with um, the uh, Northwestern's participation in the ACO, which, you know, by every everyone's view, is has been quite spectacular um, in terms of leading the charge as a hospital. So. Um, but it's just hard to get uh, my arms around this and the rollout of it into 2021 uh, without going through a more thorough and comprehensive uh, budget process that puts all of these uh, issues on the table and that we all together can find a path forward that uh, works uh, um, as best as possible. Thank you, Tom. Robin? Hi. Um I think this is this is a tough request because while it is pre-COVID, there's so much financial change swirling around related to COVID that I think it is difficult uh, this particular year to grant a pre uh, a rate increase without understanding the full picture and understanding the picture on a statewide basis. Um, I do think of the commercial ask as a, as a, kind of a statewide analysis that we need to be thinking about because uh, we do know they have a direct impact on commercial premiums and um, I think we're gonna see as we move into the regular budget process quite a bit of pressure um, on the rate side. Now, with that said, if we were thinking about this as a global budget, we would be looking for trade trade-offs between price and volume. And so I hear what Northwest is saying, that overall an increase in price due to the decrease in volume would even out. Um, so, but I think, again, it's too hard to do it as a one-off given our current situation. So I think I'm I'm on board and consistent with what everybody else has said. I would just say that I think we're going to have to, I'm kind of glad we pushed the hospital budget discussion by a week because I do think we have to, for that discussion, think about how we're going to approach rate increases and volume decline um, in a cre more creative way than we have been able to in the past. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Council Barber, question for you. Since we took public comment on uh, uh, last Wednesday and we also had the open public comment period, do we need to throw it back out there again right now? Yes. Okay, thank you. So with that, I'm gonna open it up for public comment. Would anyone wish to make a comment? Hearing none, is there a board member who would like to make a motion? I can do it if nobody else wants to, but I'm happy to have somebody else do this one. Go go for it, Robin. Uh, I move um, that we deny Northwestern rate increase request. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, Council Barber, if you could call the roll. Member Holmes? Yes. Member Pelham? Yes. Member Eusper? Yes. Member Lunge? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. With that, um, is there any old business to come before the board? 
or is there any new business to come before the board? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, everyone. Have a, a good rest of the morning.